Hey there, thank you for tuning into Simtech channel. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to calculate the short circuit current and the short circuit MVA at two points. That is point F1 and point F2. Okay, now let's get rolling. What is the problem statement? The problem statement says here that the estimated short circuit MVA at a bus bar of a generating station is 800 MVA. Why is it 800 MVA and 1200 MVA? That is obviously because generator G1 is supplying a capacity of 800 MVA. That means in case of a short circuit, 800 MVA is expected to flow onto the short circuit point. And that is exactly the same for generator 2. Both generators operate at 11 kilovolt. Now, they're asking us to calculate the possible short circuit MVA, okay, at each station when they are linked by an intake connector of a reactant 0.5 ohm per phase. This is an intake connector reactor. What is a reactor? Now, usually on large systems, as you can see, 800 MVA is quite a huge generator. 1200 MVA is also a big generator. So, usually on large systems, these that are interconnected to other systems, additional impedance is required in the form of reactors to limit the short circuit value to a safe levels. So, that is the role of the reactor that we have in the system. Now, let's move on and find the fault at F1 and F2. Now, before we move forward, let's see the visual illustrations of our system. So, we've got generator 1 interconnected with generator 2 by a reactor that we said is limiting the short circuit current that may occur to a safe value. Okay? And that reactor have an impedance of 0.5 ohm. Okay. So that is it for our illustrations. But before we move on, again, please, one more thing, guys. Just one more thing. Please subscribe to Simtech channel. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. That will be very, 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 very highly appreciated. I thank you in advance. Okay, so let's dive into our tutorial. The problem statement does not provide us what is the base values that we need to use the base mva and the base voltage now remember when we do per unit system we change from one base to another base so the previous values that were there were designed for another system so when we do a per unit calculation we change to a different base now given that the base mva is not provided now it's up to us what base value we want to use for our calculations. It is important to note that the base value that we choose doesn't matter because the calculated values will not change so long as we don't make mistakes along the way. So we choose a base MVA of 800 MVA as base. No all per units given to us, so we're just going to calculate the Z per unit using the base values. Okay. Now let's see an illustration of the bus bus system because we know that generator one and generator two are supplying a long transmission line, but we do have transmission substations and in the transmission substation, they are bus bus. So we're just going to have an illustration of a transmission bus uh, of a bus bus system. So we've got generator one at 800 MVA, and this is bus bar for generator one, and generator two and its bus bar. So now the fault are located at this point. This is the point where the fault are located. If you've been watching Simtech channel, you'll understand that in order to calculate the short circuit current here, you have to convert your system into a per unit system. That is, an impedance diagram in periodic form. So, which means 
please pay attention guys which means we have first to convert these generators into a per unit equivalent we already have a 0 0.5 ohm impedance okay reactance that is coming from the reactor so let's just calculate now the per unit values of generator 1 and generator 2 now I'm not going to explain too much on this. There's plenty of videos I've done on per unit system. So what we get is, so generator one, Z per unit, gives us one J per unit. And that is precisely because we chose the values of 800 MV as our base value. And seeing that we are working on this zone, so which means the zone voltage here is also 11 kilovolt. So basically, uh, following the formula, we got 1 J per unit, okay? Now, generator 2, we found a Z per unit value of 0, 0.667 J per unit. And that is precisely because generator 2 have an old MVA of 1,200, okay? That is dividing the new uh, MVA of the base, okay? Following the formula. And the base voltage on generator 2 is also 11 kilovolts. So this cancels. So basically, we just have this 8 divided by 12. And that gives us this value of 0 0.667 J per unit. Now, we move on. We still have one thing to calculate. That is the per unit of the line. Okay? It is a line. This is a line. From, from generator 1 to generator 2, we have an interconnected line. Now, we could have just run transmission uh, line cable straight through, but because it's a large systems, potentially they have very high short circuit current. That is why we included the reactor, okay, of reactant 0 0.5 to limit the value to a safe level. Okay, we talked about that. But because now we want to convert this system into a per unit system, so we then need, okay, guys, to convert this reactor reactance into a per unit value because it's an impedance okay so what do we do now we consider that this 0 0.5 is a z actual okay so that's the z actual okay now if you've been following the per unit uh, tutorial you will understand the common formula used for the per unit so z per unit of the line is z actual divided by zb now what is zb zb is now the base Okay, so that is the base impedance of this line. Now, the base impedance of this line will depend on two factors. The first one is the voltage on this line. Or we know this voltage is 11 kilovolt. The second factor is the base MV that we've used for the system. That is 800 MVA. So that is what is going to influence the Z base of this line. Okay. Since we already got Z actual here. So we just need to calculate Z base. So Z base formula is V B zone square over S B nu. Now V B zone is the 11 kilovolt because we know this zone here is 11 kilovolt. From here guys, you just have to replace the formulas. Okay. And we find a Z base of 0, 0,151 ohm as simple as that so now moving on we can then deduce and calculate our z per unit of the line that is the 0, 0,5 okay divided by 0, 0,151 and that gives us this value of 3.311 j so now we've calculated the per unit values for g1 g2 and the reactor so now we can now redraw our circuit and replacing the value with per unit value. So we can now get the per unit diagram of our system. Now this is now calculating for 4 to 1 because we are required to calculate for both F1 and F2. So we decide which one we do first. Now this is your preference. So we decided to start with F1. So Redrawing the circuit for F1, so now this is F1 at this side here, so that is basically on the side of generator 1. And separating them with generator 2 is the reactor that's got now a per unit value of 3.311. 
Now, the current path now, since there is a short circuit here, okay, wherever the loads are in this system here, which you haven't specified, it doesn't matter now. The current is now going to flow straight into the fault from here and to the side. All the current is coming here. All the currents are coming here. So, which means we need to calculate the total per unit impedance of the path where the currents are taking. Okay? So, what do we see? We see that there is a 1J here and there is a comma 667J and there is a 3.3. .3. So, automatically, this one and this one, they are in series. So, we'll add them and together they will be in parallel with this one. So that gives us a Z per unit total of 0,8J. Okay, guys, are you following? Thank you. I like that. Please drop a comment if you have any question so far where we are. So from here now, we can then calculate our I per unit. Because we know that I per unit is equal to 1 over Z per unit. So now we can then move on and calculate our short circuit current for F1. So short circuit current for F1, we know the general formula here is short circuit current is equal to the uh, per unit current times the line current. Now the per unit current is the one that we calculate using the Z per unit total. The line current is the current that is flowing from the two generators. So we consider that the line current. Thus mean the line current is equal to SB nu. Okay, that's the base MVA. We know that it is 800. And that will be divided by the zone voltage and also uh, by, by the square root of 3. But before we do that, let's first calculate the I per unit. I per unit is equal to 1 over Z per unit total. We've already said that. And that is 1 over 0, 0,8. And that gives us a current of 1.25 amp per unit. Then we can then calculate the I line. So I line gives us a current of 41.9 and basically 42 kilo amps. Guys, 42 kilo amps of current. That is a lot of current that's going to flow there. Please don't go touch. Please, if you find yourself near such a large system, try not to touch anything. Basically, when you enter a transmission line substation, consider anything metal energized. Don't touch. Okay, now moving on. We know that the short circuit current is I per unit times I line. So we have both. You know what to do. is to just complete them. And we found a short circuit current of 52.49 kilo amps. Basically 52.5 kilo amps. Now from here, you know, finding the MVA short circuit, okay? Is an easy task. Why? Because we already know what the current is. So we're just going to replace it on the apparent power, okay, formula. So KVA short circuit or MVA short circuit, we know that our short circuit is equal to SB nu over VB zone times the square root of 3. So this is basically the formula for I line. We're just replacing it with the R short circuit. Now transforming the circuit, we've got the S short circuit. That is equal to square root of 3 times V zone times I short circuit. And this is the I short circuit that we have here. So from here, we just replace and we find a value of 1000 MVA. 1000 MVA. So that is the short circuit MVA at this point. Now remember what they say here. They say there is an estimated short circuit MVA of 800 MVA on this side. But now when we're calculating, we're getting 1000 MVA. And that is precisely because this one is also contributing now. But fortunately for us, we've got something that's dampening here. We've got an impedance that is limiting 
the short circuit current coming from this guy here to this side now this guy here j2 is not contributing that much here because of this reactor now you see the importance of the reactor now if we repeat this calculation we don't place a reactor i can guarantee you this value is going to be very high it's as simple as that so you can go ahead guys remove the reactor repeat the calculations you're going to get a short circuit mva of 2000 mva that is 800 plus 1200 mva please try that exercise just to uh, uh, satisfy yourself okay now we move on to the second short circuit that is now at f2 now we're going to follow the same procedure here exactly what we did so we're going to redraw our circuit because we already know what are the per unit values of most of all these quantities here so we're just going to replace them and redrawing for f2 we now we know our 1j for generator 1 uh, 0.667 for generator 2 and 3.3 uh, for the reactor so what's going on here now we know the fault have now moved to fault 2 so what's the story here now the reactor now is in series with j1 per unit okay it's now in series because now the current path is now going this way and coming this way so these two are now in series so automatically z per unit total value will change so z per unit total give us now the following value so we got 0 0.57 Eight. okay so it's slightly slightly less than the previous one so now we move on wrapping up this tutorial we can then calculate the short circuit current using the formula i per unit times i line and i per unit that is going to be equal to 1.73 amps so you can see that it also increases because the z per unit total here have also decreased okay and the next thing in line to calculate is the value of I line. We already calculated I line and that is equal to 42 kilo amps. So from there, we can then calculate the value of our short circuit current. So that is 1.73, okay, of the I per unit that we calculated times the 42 uh, kilo amps of current of the line. And that is equal to 72 point seven key low amp let me just confirm it in my calculator here that is 1.73 times 42 okay and that gives me a value of 72.66 and that is basically 72.7 kilo amps okay so that is the magnitude of the short circuit current okay that will be flowing at this point here f2 because now remember the short circuit current here is much larger than the previous than the previous one we saw at f2 that was at about 52 kilo amps and that is precisely because j2 is supplying a much higher current because it has uh, an mv of 1200 uh, volt ampere mega volt ampere so it's a huge capacities and uh, J2 is equally contributing to the fault, but because of the impedance, okay, of the reactor here, the contribution of J2 is uh, minimized. This is why we have a slightly higher current of 72.7 kilo amps. So we then use this current to calculate our short circuit MVA, and that gives us a value of 1,300 and 85 mega volt ampere you see now this is what we were assuming and estimated based on what was supplying but we we were not taking account of j2 of j1 that was also contributing into the system since now we are taking account of the contribution of j1 into the fault plus j2 itself now the fault at this point can be 1.2 uh 1200 mva it has to be 1300 equally so at this point it couldn't be the 800 but the 1000 that we calculated 
guys that is it for this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe to simtech channel please don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up okay and subscribe to simtech channel that would be highly appreciated i thank you